Thanks for checking out the Bosch and Roll channel. If you want to see me play your deck, hang out with me and the amazing Bosch and Roll community in Discord, access to my lists and sideboard guides before tournaments, book an individual coaching session, or just generally want to support what's going on here, check out the Patreon and YouTube membership options. For the finest Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, use code Bosch and Roll for 10% off your order at coalesceapparel.shop. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. If you want to play what I'm playing, use my affiliate link to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com and play any deck anytime on Magic Online with a cardhoarder.com loan account. Thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to another Boston Roll video. Today I have an exciting deck and an exciting setup. This is, of course, the Epic Storm, the signature deck of my Eternal Glory podcast co-host, Bryant Cook, also owner of theepicstorm.com and the Epic Storm on YouTube. Go check out all that stuff if you enjoy this kind of deck. But this is also a $500 trophy challenge from Jeremy of 7 Factor Software. That's one of my sponsors, and Jeremy put a little extra spice into the queue this week. He wants to see me wrap my control player brain around combo and go into full tryhard mode. I get two chances with the Epic Storm to put up a 5-0 for an extra $500. And this is going to be fun. This is not in my wheelhouse. This is not the type of deck that I know all the little tricks for. This is also a deck with more polarized matchups. Like, matchups always matter, but usually when I take on these $500 challenges, it's with a deck that contains Force of Will and Prismatic Ending, and Uro, which gives me a lot more wiggle room to figure out various things. This deck has no Force of Will. The only protection spell in its main deck is Veil of Summer. This is a completely different beast than what I'm normally used to playing, but I am excited about it all the same. I have the great resource of TheEpicStorm.com. Bryant put up a 5-0 on his channel, The Epic Storm YouTube, about two weeks ago. With this same main deck, the sideboard has changed a lot, but it's the same main deck. I just watched that. 5-0 League start to finish. I have the epicstorm.com up in my other browser. It's got matchup guides and card descriptions and like reasons to do things like fundamentally, not just the sideboard guide, but also like this is what the matchup is about, which really helps. And short of playing a thousand matches with the deck, which I'm not gonna have time to do, I have done my homework for this. That's what the league is. The deck, if you're not familiar, if you're watching a legacy video for the first time. The Epic Storm is a Burning Wish-fueled storm deck. It wants to use Veil of Summer to protect itself. Once you resolve a Veil, there's not a whole lot you need to worry about. And then you start whipping cards around with Echo of Eons, storing up mana and resources in play with all these artifacts. There's 15 mana artifacts plus Mistress Bobo, which helps turn on Opal plus Wish Claw Talisman. This deck can turn 1. It can also turn 10. You could set into these grindy Galvanic Relay games where you flip 7 cards, and then the next turn you flip 8 cards, and then you win 3 or 4 turns down the road. Or you can just Turbo Splat opponents on turn, turn 1 before they get a turn with Echo and Lion's Eye Diamond. This particular sideboard, I am lucky enough to be friends and in uh, a small discord chat with Bryant and Alex McKinley and many people who play the Epic Storm exclusively or at least primarily and I have the the newest tech here which includes two copies of Crash. In Brian's video two weeks ago he was talking about how three abrupt decay doesn't seem necessary they've replaced one of those with Crash and there's no carpet of flowers in this build of the deck. The one carpet he played two weeks ago with in his trophy league is also a crash. And crash is specifically for the prison matchups. You get to just punch through a chalice of the void basically for free and then go nuts before they can do more stuff. Crash kills a chalice on zero or on one. Chalice on zero, you can veil of summer and then cast all your zeros because chalice does counter. Uh, chalice on one counters the veil, but then you can still dump all your zeros. And the only things you don't get are Brainstorm Dark Ritual, Rite of Flame. And you could still win. You can win through a Chalice on 1 or a Chalice on 0. But Crash just helps 
so that doesn't happen. Also, a lot of the decks with these artifacts in them also have Blood Moon in them, and this turns all your lands into mountains, which I think is really funny. Okay, I have my resources up. I will be doing the full tryhard mode where I Google the username of all of my MTGO opponents during this league. I don't normally do that on leagues, but I do do that for like Eternal Weekend and PTQs and things that are important. With this deck, with the big money on the line, and because this deck needs to know as much information about its opponent's deck as possible, it's going to be a time to use that strat. I'm going to treat this like the freaking Pro Tour. Let's go do it. I'm on the play in round one. My opponent does have a few published trophies in Legacy. None of them are recent. The most recent one was April. And I'm recording this in October, if you're watching this way later. All of their posted finishes are with kind of blue soup decks. Except the one from April is with actual Jund, like Grandfather Jund with Ignoble Hierarch and Bloodbraid Elf. But everything else is like Grixis and Bant and Four Color Soup. I am going to keep this Veil of Summer hand. There's not a tropical island in the list. And the Bayou's in my hand, so I have this kind of awkward decision. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm definitely just going to pass with Veil of Summer up and ship the turn. Uh, what I was starting to say is I can't cast Veil of Summer and brainstorm off the same land if I lead on my fetch land. Soul Guide Lantern, sure. Okay. Um, there's probably some hero mode thing where I could just win the game right now, but like brainstorm and the math checks out that it works that I'll probably win, but I am not that versed in the Epic Storm, so I will pass against the mono black deck with Veil of Summer up and my tutor in play. Opposition Agent is a card I am concerned about, I suppose. If I Wish Claw, I can just ad nauseum. If I Brainstorm into Fast Mana, and would they have led on Soul Guide Lantern if they had Dark Ritual Opposition Agent? That seems unlikely. Do I just cast ad nauseum here? I think so. Okay, don't oppo me. Alright, didn't get oppoed. Here is ad nauseum. And then fetch. Does this matter? Uh, did I make my land drop? I played the fetch land this turn. Yeah, it's turn three. So I've already made my land drop. Put bad lands into play. And then one, two, three, four, five. Ad nauseum. And we're going. Gonna need some zero cost mana because I've already used my land drop. The lotus petal in the mix. Two Lotus Petals and Dark Ritual to get off the ground. Right of Flame, Dark Ritual. I can keep going because my life total is not in danger. Two Right of Flames, three Petals. This should be enough to win. Many Right of Flames. Now I'm at seven. Echoes in the deck that deals six. Tendrils is in the deck that deals four. I can go again. Hit a Lion's Eye Diamond. All right, they're just conceding. They've seen enough. I was deciding if I wanted to chase a Thoughtseize into Tendrils, or like I are already easily have the Tendrils here. Okay, uh, we're against some mono black deck with Soul Guide Lantern. That's probably some Saga deck. Do I want Chain of Vapor just as a generic like out to Karn and Galvanic Relay? My understanding is that card can be cut in matchups where you either don't need to grind or won't have time to grind. And this might be a don't need to grind matchup. So if they ley line my echo, I can st I still have my eight tutors for Adnaz. Oh, they're probably an oppo agent at deck, no matter what else they're doing. So the chain of vapors are good. Do I also want abrupt decay? Because they have to dark ritual it out for it to arrive on a the time frame I care about. I'm gonna run it like this. It's minimum sideboarding. I don't want to break the deck when I might like miss some angle of like if you start shaving bobbles and like your opals aren't on and, and your ad nauseums are worse and whatever. Uh, I, I don't want to accidentally slide into that trap when I don't really know all the intricacies. I okay, have the chain and the veil. Chain veil is a different card, but together they're also effective. 
If my opponent turn one oppos, I'm in trouble. This hand's pretty solid against anything short of that. I'm going to keep. Excited to see sideboard cards. Maybe this hand isn't that good because it's not really going anywhere quick. I could just slow Burning Wish for Thoughtseize and then Thoughtseize them and then go off like turn four or five if they at least try to settle into some sort of slow game. When I watched Bryant's Trophy League, he was like, he would have hands that looked like it was like, okay, well, we're just going to pass the turn here. And he was like, I'm going to brainstorm and probably win. And then he did. And it clearly, I don't fully understand. All the stuff. Uh-oh. That's a way to get Oppo Agent in. Lauren the Mirthless. I'm always a fan of that card. Okay, we're a Chalice deck. Burning Wish. Oh, on zero and one. Sure. Uh, Burning Wish for Pulverize. Just clears all that out. Do I think they're a Wasteland deck? I don't really want to get Opposition Agented. But Oppo will get me next turn anyway. And I can just play the other fetch. And whether I fetch now into Wasteland or fetch next turn into Oppo... Great. The bobble, not quite there yet. I could pulverize now. I can also just pass the turn and try to actually do something after the pulverize. Okay, so they either kept a hand on the strength of double chalice or they are sandbagging oppo agent and don't want to tap out. Every draw step I give them, they get closer to having an agent. But pulverize doesn't win yet. So I'm going to pass the turn. Oh shit, you are a Wasteland deck. I wonder if that was a sandbag or... Or what? Or if they just drew it. Oh sick. Now I can just Burning Wish. Just put Pulverize in my hand. Like, they can't Dark Ritual or Thoughtseize. Maybe that's what's happening right now. If I wish for... Oh, I, I need to resolve one of my fetch lands before I can Pulverize. If I wish for Pulverize, that's Storm 1. Pulverize is Storm 2, and then I have Bobble Opal, Storm 4, Dark Rituals 5, but the Opal's not on. I don't have any extra mana. Do I crack the fetch and see if it works? Uh, I could also get Crash instead of Pulverize, Crash the Chalice on 1, cast Veil of Summer, and then dump out all my zeros. But Pulverize also takes them off black mana, which is really tempting. Yeah, I'm going to crack a fetch land. As long as I end up with two mountains, it's fine. If they respond with oppo, I can fetch the other one in response, and they get one of my lands, but they don't get both. So I ha I'll have zero lands at the end of this interaction. Yikes. Okay, I'll get Taiga. And Opposition Agent, unfortunately, resolves. You get to steal a land out of my deck forever. Oh, but then you'll have black mana at the end of this anyway. Damn it. I thought I was being smart, but yeah, they just get a swamp. Yeah, they took my Badlands. Maybe I should have fetched Badlands just to, so they can't take a black source. They could have taken Underground Seed. Nope. All right. Just got punished. What color do I need up at the end of my chain here? Oh yeah, without the land, I can't Dark Ritual. Do I still Pulverize or do I just wait now? Storm is one from the Oppo. Yeah, I think I have to wait. Ah, oh, that sucks. Okay. Uh, I think I underestimated the effect of this card. Wasting my Bayou. That takes me off black and... Yeah, just black. It didn't take me off Pulverize, though, which is the card I was really interested in. There's my Badlands. Cranial Extraction. What the fuck? Search target players. Graveyard, Hand, and Library for all cards with that name. Okay. Um, And I can't Veil of Summer that as nice as that would be. All right, I'm done. Okay, uh, having the complete stones of turn, zero, turn one, Chalice on zero, and one backed up by Oppo Agent, congrats, you figured it out. Now we get a game on the play. Abrupt Decay looking more important than Chain of Vapor now. Chain costs less, but if they're Chalicing on one and having Opposition Agent, then Abrupt Decay is just going to be better. Do I want Thoughtseize in my deck? I don't think so. Okay, let's go. On the play with an Echo, if they don't have Leyline, I'm going to keep shit. <laughs> Everything's coming up, not me. I could still relay for some medium-sized number. That doesn't seem very good. 
I'm going to play Bloodstained Mire and Lion's Eye Diamond. I could relay for three and lose my Abrupt Decay. Not interested. The squeeze they put you on with both Wasteland and Opposition Agent in their deck is pretty messed up. Not going to lie. Okay, I have that one covered. I'm going to fetch a at our Underground C here. That gives me green, black, and blue. That gives me all my colors and Abrupt Decay. There's Wasteland. Cool. I'm going to decay in response. They don't have black mana. They can't oppo. Play line still in play. So the, the tasty little echo that I was going for, still not on the table. A volcanic Island. Maybe I should have played my fetch land when they can't agent me. Should I be burning wishing now? I could just put a bunch of goblins into play right now and... And hope for the best. Ray of Flame, Burning Wish. Empty the Warrens. That's two. Yeah, that's exactly enough to do that. I could also wish for Crash. And just be prepared for the next Chalice. That could also build Storm. If I go for Goblins next turn. Is six Goblins going to beat this deck? Ancient Tomb is rough on mana. I feel much better with eight Goblins. I could just wish for Crash, cast Crash for Free Storm next turn. It's Crash an instant. No, it's not because we can wish for it, obviously. Okay. I can't Crash unless they play an artifact. I could destroy my own LED, but due to timing, I wouldn't get anything out of it. I could wish for Thoughtseize right now and then set up a Thoughtseize into all of my other spells next turn. But if I was going to do that, I should have fetched with Bloodstained Mire now. Okay. Okay, I'm going to wish for Thoughtseize. And I'll pass the turn here. Wasteland. Jeez. Relentless with this. How about Lotus Petal off the top? Veil of Summer. Okay. Um, if I spend a turn Thoughtseizing, and I could just make the six goblins this turn. I'm going to fetch when they can't oppo. Guess I would like green mana available at some point this game. What do you got over there? Helm and Chrome Mox. Okay, I'll take the Helm, at least so we don't die. There's a Saga. Can I beat that with Goblins? Two Veils. Cool. If I make the six Goblins now, then they take two, make a 1-1. One, one. Oh, but they can play Chrome Mox to make it a 2-2. Two, two. Drawing Crash gets me out of this. If they have a Shadow Spear anywhere in their deck, I lose. Damn. Yeah, I don't think Goblins are the answer. I'm going to pass the turn with this Veil of Summer up. I want to do something bigger. Cast Thoughtseize. Cast Thought Thoughtseize. Yes, Black Mana. No, that's specifically the card I didn't want to see. But they are... Do I have enough Mountains in my deck to Pulverize? Badlands is still in there somewhere. Okay. I can pulverize at the back end of this Urza Saga. If I so desire. Chrome Mox also makes green mana now. I can write a flame burning wish. One, two, three, four, five. That's still not Pier. I'm going to run out this Chrome Mox. My plan is to pulverize. Why am I playing Chrome Mox? I don't have a brain in my head is the answer. Okay, they get to make the construct and do cool stuff here. Did not make a second construct, just tutoring. Soul Guide Lantern. They just want to draw a card, I guess. Exiling their own wasteland because they have to target something. Did you find a... Oh, okay. This is a good one to Veil. Well, four mana spell getting Veil of Summered. Ow. Put that into the graveyard, please. Where's Call a Talisman? Okay, so you're saying there's a chance. All right. Did we navigate this somehow? We know Chrome Mox is the only card in their hand. They can draw a card with Soul Guide Lantern, but unless it's Mind Rake Trap, that both in their deck and on top of their deck, it doesn't matter. So Burning Wish for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I can peer into the Abyss here. That's got to be the right one to do. It's better than Adnaud. Sees more cards. Ray of Flame. 
Dark Ritual. Burning Wish. Holding Priority. Black, black, black. Put Peer into my hand. And I will draw 22 cards, please. And let's start putting them into play. I drew the Badlands straight up. That's good. Just going to play that. And tons of mana. The Tendrils is right here in my hand. And Ritual, Ritual, Ritual. Yeah, we're, we're having a blast. And the only thing they could do is Mindbreak Trap off the top with Soul Guide Lantern. And even if they do that, I can still Wish Claw for Burning Wish and get the other Tendrils. All right, cool. <laughs> we navigated it. Uh, that one got dicey, but Veil of Summering a four mana spell feels pretty good. Okay, uh, the $500 dream is tentatively alive. Uh, I am sharpening up here as we move. Let's go. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of Seven Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. Seven Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire Seven Factor or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at sevenfactor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to Seven Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. On the play in round number two, my opponent has many MTGO trophies, most recently with Doomsday and Ad Nauseam Tendrils, both this month in the last two weeks. There were a couple Death Shadows before that, but going back through their whole history, just a lot of Ad Nauseam and Doomsday. Okay. Doomsday is, I believe, one of the tougher matchups because they are also a fast combo deck, but also have uh, Duress and Force of Will. My opening hand does not do anything. I'm going to send it. Okay. Um, this one has the Veil of Summer, but I can't cast it. I could keep this bottom one of the baubles and hope the bobble plus draw step produces something useful. I wish that like one of these was just even Lotus Petal if I had Veil of Summer to, to protect with. But going off protected next turn, I do have a ton of mana here. And I'm going to keep this, send a bobble, and hope this works. Underground Sea, Mishra's Bobble, Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm going to at least play out my powerful spells against the probable discard deck. Bobble you. Brainstorm on top, okay. Blooded Strand. That land would not be an Ad Nauseam Tendrils, I don't think. Yeah, here's the duress. Uh, shattered, shattered, absolutely destroyed. Gonna lose burning wish here. Brainstorm and more. Okay, brainstorm. Let's go. Fix this hand. Ace. Okay, sure. Brainstorm is countered. It sets my opponent back a land. They may or may not care about that. This is definitely doomsday, by the way. But a scalding tarn. So we know card in hand is underground sea. Personal tutor. Looking for the Doomsday here. Now on top of the deck. Brainstorm again. Let's go. Ah, oh, fucking butts. Well, I have no mana and I'm Brainstorm locked against Doomsday. There's not a line here, right? Like, there's not like a float mana in my draw step and do something clever. I'm just dead. Okay. All right. Uh, Underground Sea being Underground Sea instead of any fetch land may have killed us that game like they had days so they could daze the veil of summer but it would have at least let one of the brainstorms resolve i don't know yeah that sucked okay doomsday galvanic relay is good when they settle into the control half of their deck like the duress force of will half it doesn't matter at all if they just jam turn one doomsday when they know we can't really interact with that I don't really think there is a sideboard here. Veil of Summer is my best card. I don't think I want Thoughtseize just in my main deck. Or at least I don't want to cut anything for it. I think we're just racing. On the play with a hand that does not do anything. I'm going to mulligan. This hand casts Veil of Summer. And can accelerate out of Burning Wish. What does this actually look like? 
Dark Ritual is good. The Burning Wish is here. Mox Opal and Chrome Mox are kind of the same card in the sand. In that they're not helpful. And Chrome Mox needs more cards to be helpful. Or Opal needs more cards to be helpful. Chrome Mox I could top deck something I don't care about. For an extra mana. So three, four... I'm going to keep this and bottom the Chrome Mox and have faith in my deck to produce more cards at some point. Like, I need a draw engine to win the game anyway, and Opal is good once we're drawing cards. Chrome Mox could have let me play around days with the Dark Ritual, but then I, I don't have Dark Ritual. Under for my opponent. Lotus Petal. Yikes. Brainstorm. That is generally a card I like. If this Lotus Petal Dark Ritual is out opposition agent, I don't know what to do with my life. Okay. We dodged that cruel fate. I don't have any black sources right now. I need green and red to execute my plan, and I need blue to cast Brainstorm. There's no version of Fetchlands here that lets me Brainstorm now, and then Burning Wish and Veil of Summer next turn. Is that... Is that accurate? Doesn't sound accurate. Maybe I just get Underground Sea and play around Days with my Veil of Summer. Good end step brainstorm. But that was mostly just playing around Opposition Agent as much as I can. That is a juke that they have. Just a lot of cantripping brainstorm into Ponder. I'm going to end step this brainstorm. Try to supercharge my hand. Uh, that. Oh, stupid opal. Um, I got excited. I was like, oh yeah, there's a bunch of mana, but it's actually not a bunch of mana. Put back opal and veil. And I can cast one of the veils now to just dig through this. They did cast blue or black spells this turn. I can cantrip. And they're going to read that as either me having a weak hand or a second veil. Yeah, if I go veil of summer, dark ritual... Then I don't have red mana, so that's not helpful. Do I want to bobble them or leave this in play? I, I'm like close on mana. I, I think I want to give myself the draw of like any artifact to, to play this game rather than draw a card. Grass, Veil of Summer. Nice, got um. All right, and I drew the any artifact to play this game, though now I don't have Veil of Summer. Back into the Force of Will gets me territory. I could relay here. Can I relay here? Yeah, I can. If I Dark Ritual, Burning Wish, then I can Lotus Petal. I could even also Opal if I want to. They counter the Burning Wish, that kind of sucks. But I have another one. Okay, Dark Ritual. Burning Wish. I'm going to get a relay and try to set up a, a next turn. They may have sculpted a non past the turn doomsday pile in which case that sucks but red i think an extra card's worth an extra opal exile five cards and hope i can win tarn bayou bloodstain mire oh come on right of flame and another relay let's hope they can't doomsday and win without passing the turn Oh no, is this Limb Duel's Vault in the end step? Opposition Agent in the end step. Okay. That's not the worst thing that could happen, honestly. There is a Bayou in Exile. This Mishra's Bobble is turning on Opal, which might be relevant. I'd like to draw a card, but I don't know that I can here. Like, I can grind through an Opposition Agent. That's a thing we can do. A game we can play. Uh-oh. Deep Analysis targeting yourself, hard cast. I respect the hell out of that. Uh, they are clearly spinning their wheels and not advancing this game right now, but that... Okay, uh, can I Galvanic Relay if I bobble? Right of Flame Relay, land Right of Flame Relay, just still cast this card, and then I have to Relay back through the pile anyway. Yeah, I'm going to bobble. Lotus Petal on top for you. Opal, another Burning Wish. I am flush on Burning Wishes. I'm going to play Bayou, because that's the one I can play. And what's in my sideboard? I could Grape Shot this Opposition Agent. 
I'm definitely casting Rite of Flame. Let's start there. We didn't force a will that. That's lucky. I can Burning Wish for Grape Shot, kill Oppo, and then Relay. Is that right? No, I'm a, am I a mana short of that? I am. Yes, I am a mana short of that. Disappointing. I could Burning Wish or something to build Storm and get a bigger Relay. What is the something? Thoughtseize. By Burning Wish for Thoughtseize, I'm, yeah, that is still a mana short. And I could get the Thoughtseize now and then just have it in my hand for next turn. Burning Wish. Or some negation pitching personal tutor. Okay. That builds Storm either way, which is mostly what I was going for. And I think this Opal, once again, is worth more as a card than it is as an Opal. Exile five more cards. Let's try this again next turn. Wishclaw, Echo, Falk, Veil, Chrome Mox. Uh, that was kind of rough. Opposition Agent getting in for three. We know they just drew Lotus Petal. Which can give them hard cast force of will. Oh, Shieldred. That sucks. Okay, the race is on. I drew LED. Um, I can't Veil now. Or I can't uh, Peer now because Shieldred's in play. I can play Volcanic Island. Wish for Grape Shot. Kill Opposition Agent. Try to beat Shieldred next turn. Is that the play? I'm going to play Lion's Eye Diamond. And this turn I'm about to embark on involves discarding my hand anyway. Wait, is there a Tendrils kill here? There is a Tendrils in my deck. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana if I give up my Burning Wish, seven mana if I don't. I have to kill Oppo, which is a four mana play that only leaves three mana left to play the game with. I can't get Storm up to seven to kill Children and. Oppo. Yeah, I think... Oh, I need to Burning Wish for the Grape Shot. Right, yeah. I, I'm, like, ready to pitch this thing to Chromox when that's absolutely not how this works. Okay, uh... Might as well build the Storm, Chromox. I'm not going to end up with more cards in my hand. That also turns on Opal, which gives me Veil, vale, which is also Storm. So I might as well cast the Veil vale now, right? Is there any world where I get to keep my... Lion's Eye Diamond with my Wishclaw Talisman? I don't think so. Storm is 2. Dale would make it 3. Yeah, my opponent's at 17. I'm, I'm not going to find a, a Tendril's kill here. Can't Peer. Can't Tutor. Alright, I'll put Burning Wish on the stack, get my Grape Shot, and then uh, Veil for good measure. Grape Shot, Target, Opposition, Agent, and Opposition Agent, and then my opponent three times. Agent's dead, and then I can use Lion's Eye Diamond for Black, Black, Black to cast Wishclaw Talisman. And there's nothing left to wish for here. The Echo in my deck's already there. How many Burning Wishes have I used? Three. There's one Burning Wish in my deck, and my Echo's gone. Yikes. Okay. That sucked. Fucking children. I would be feeling medium to okay about this game without her involved. Flashback deep analysis, gaining a bunch of life in the process, attack me down to seven. Do I have a land left? I can ad nauseum from four. Check my exile. Uh, I believe there's one land left, and Bloodstain Meyer is the one that can get all the lands. Oh, wait, that's not true. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, Taiga. The Badlands is still in there somewhere. If Badlands is still in the deck, I can activate Wishclaw with five mana left. What does that do? Is Adnaz from four just the line? Is that even possible? I guess it would be like Petal, Petal, LED, Dark Ritual, The Last Burning Wish. Let's go. I can't draw cards. I have to actually go to them. Echo's not live. Okay, here we go. I'm at four. This line also loses to days and <laughs> every other card. Just check the deck real quick. Uh, yep. Yeah. Not a lot going on here. Yeah, so I would need 
Metal, metal, dark ritual, multiple lines eye diamonds, and burning wish to win this game before I hit any other card that costs mana. Let's get dirty. They also have three, four cards in their blue deck with days and force of will. I think I'm gonna hard cast days for the ultimate insult. Hard cast force of negation. All right, you got me. Okay, uh, I lost to what I imagine has to be one of the worst matchups that exists. Though that was close. Like the, I had multiple veils which fended off multiple spells. It was really shouldered that won this game. GG's. On to the next one. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and every other format you'll see on this channel. They have multiple customizations so you can view your deck how you want. Text view, stacks, grid, custom grouping by type, subtype, color, light mode, dark mode. However you want to see your deck, they can provide it for you. My favorite feature is you can choose your set printing, make the deck look exactly how you want it to. The deck screen features expandable sections that show you what tokens your deck makes, your recent change history to the deck, stats about mana curve and opening hand distribution, mana cost distribution. You can deal out sample hands and even play test the deck. Island Ponder. You know I'm keeping this one. This site has everything. Follow me on Moxfield.com to keep up with decks I'm playing for the channel and what I'm up to in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw in game three. The $500 dream is dead, but I get two chances and I'm going to use this as a, a practice league. Going to have to at this point. <laughs> okay. Uh, this hand has Veil, Lion's Eye Diamond with no additional business. There's a ton of mana. Wish Claw, Burning Wish, Echo, Relay off the top are really good. I wonder if you keep a hand like this. I'm going to mulligan. Okay. Um, this is a turn one echo, but it's unprotected. I'll try it. I'm going to put ad nauseum on the bottom and hope this is a non-blue deck that just dies to echo. My opponent's on a multi four. That feels like we're in some sort of busted combo mirror. Most of four are not common among normal decks. Okay. A windswept teeth strategy. I'm probably in for this. Oh, drew a land. That's good stuff. Land. Romox. Exile. Burning Wish. Right of Flame. I'm going to leave my land uncracked because that'll give me more options. Post Echo. Oh, maybe I should have emptied the Warrens. Like my opponent's on a Malta 3 and not really doing anything. I don't know. Is that? Am I supposed to do that? I could just make 10 goblins and pass. Did I miss that? Here's Echo. My opponent's a Windswept Teeth deck that mulled to four. This might be a favor for them. <laughs> and I completely bricked on action. All right. Uh, I'm not going to play any of these out. I'm just going to pass and try to have an insane next turn. Oh, maybe just 10 Goblins wins that game. If this is like green-white depths, then, then yeah, it definitely would have. Oh, all right. Action spell? Okay. I have all four Lion's Eye Diamonds in my hand. And nowhere to go. The second I find any spell, we win this game. They can Zenith for a Collector Oop right now, I guess. Please don't do that. Action spell. Okay, Brainstorm. Off of this land. Brainstorm. Action spells. Oh my god. Okay, Veil of Summer and... Do I need Dark Ritual? Do I need four Lion's Eye Diamonds? Maybe right of flame. Okay, I do want to keep the land, I guess, because they're a wasteland strategy. Let's see what this reclaimer spins up. That's being staged. I could just present depths right now. Jury step, yeah, it's stepping up the the reclaimer. It's safe. I'm going to fetch for bad lands, I guess. Uh, like every land in my deck is present, basically. Oh my god. All right, uh, they can't dark depths this turn. They are presenting it for next turn, though. Turns the jury step into dark depths and then make me win right now. Ten goblins would have won this game a hundred years ago. I think I just tunnel visioned on they they mold to four. I gotta mess up their hand, but 
maybe the, it was just an unlucky bad model four where 10 goblins easily wins come on deck some action spell something to do oh my god <laughs> unplayable deck i'm quitting magic okay uh yep that's not true uh, that was my fault i should have identified the other line and just focused on the turn zero echo and 10 goblins would have beat the windswept teeth deck on three cards for sure F, F, F. It's okay. I don't have $500 anyway. This is the, the learning league. Abrupt Decays. A Zenith for Collector Oof is probably a thing they do. Veil vale of Summer is, is blank. And this Chain of Vapors. Bring in all these interactive things. I'm looking at the popular list of Green White Depths, and they have one Oof, one Teague. And two Deafening Silence and Mind Break Trap. Also Force of Vigor, if I play into that. This hand, I can turn one Burning Wish for, for nothing and then lose to Wasteland. I'm going to mulligan. This hand is worse. Go to five. Um, I can have a big relay on turn two if I don't get Deafening Silenced. I guess I'll keep and put Underground C and... Uh, anything that I'm well, again, anything that I bought him here takes me off my turn two relay. Shit. All right, maybe that was a bad keep. I could use one of the bobbles to check my top of my deck if it's an artifact or land. Not even accurate. That's not even true. Ugh. And missing that goblin line game one gonna haunt me. Opponent is content with their four card hand. I'm going to do bobble business. I think I'm getting deafening silenced here. Oh yeah, too easy. I guess I could have played around that since I had the read on it. I'll keep the land. I'm going to need to abrupt decay eventually. I'll get bobble in. I can brainstorm in the end step to break the one spell a turn rule, get to hurt the cycle. We're going to follow up with oof and just End me. Reclaimer. Okay. Uh, I am shuffling my own deck anyway, so I'm going to bobble them. Pyroblast on top. Good time to cast my Brainstorm. Underground C casts Abrupt Decay if I find it. Uh-oh. That's not Underground C. Notably non-Underground C card, and because I bobbled, I have to draw both of these shitty cards. Oh no. Do I just relay, YOLO relay, or do I invest Mox Opal in the future? I think I'm going to invest in the future. And they're drawing Pyroblast. Do I put Lion's Eye Diamond into play to spin if I draw Echo? Do I float it out there? Or do I just like play to a world where I draw a removal spell for Deafening Silence and get a good relay? I'm going to play to a world where I can answer Deafening Silence and get a good relay. So I'm going to die to depths pretty quick. They're just chugging now. And they have the Pyroblast for Chain of Vapor, so it has to be Abrupt Decay. Stage from hand cuts a whole turn off of how quickly they can produce Dark Depths. Okay, I've now drawn more lands than I actually play. Perfect. And is it possible to win here? I don't think that it is, because I have to answer Deafening Silence, which costs a spell, and I have to answer Merit Lage, which also costs a spell. And they have Pyroblast, which answers my only answer to Merit Lage. Oh, we're just getting Wasteland. We have Ramen up Excavator or Zenith for that, and then start taking me off lands one by one. I'll float a black, show you what's what. Reclaimer, all right. Ad nauseum. <laughs> Remember that time that I had all of my lands in my deck in play, and one of them got Wastelanded? One, two, three, four, five. There are only five mana producing lands. I can fetch the fourth one here, and the fifth is already over here. <laughs> uh, life is pain. If they spin up another wasteland, commit to this plan, or if it's time to depths me. It is time to depths me. Okay, cool. Oh, interesting. They just played Yavamaya, which turns my fetch land into a land. I think it's too late and doesn't matter. Oh my god, I drew abrupt decay. Is this a turn too late and doesn't matter? Yeah, I can black green, destroy deafening silence, and then 
I'm short on Adnaz. I snuck through it by one turn. Uh, I can't... Or I could fetch, cast Adnaz, and then... Yeah, that doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, they have the Pyroblast, even if I find Chain and I can't cast Chain. Brutal. Yeah, I messed up game one. This game two, uh, maybe I should have chased a, a more aggressive Echo line, because they stopped at four cards. They... They had the silence. Okay, there was a lot of learning there. That looks like I didn't really play magic, but that was on me. Could have found the, the goblins in game one and then could have just mulliganed better in game two. Okay. I'm internalizing all of these lessons for the next one, the next $500 challenge. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the draw in round four, I have four mana on turn one. That's a little short of a big relay. I think I want to keep this hand. This double wish, lots of mana. This gives me a lot of play. Maybe I shouldn't be looking for play, though. Is it clear yet that I'm not an expert in storm combo based on this league? Secluded courtyard. Oh, my God. Come on, deck. This is one we should be able to beat. They are a pretty aggressive deck with wasteland and usually force of will. Okay. Um, is that the one mana I was missing for the big relay? If I pitch one of the wishes, I get two, three, four, five mana. Storm is one, two, three, four, five, six. I can exile six cards for next turn. Uh, all the mana is red, so there's no other way around that. Oh wait, was I even counting my land in those counts? Or, or yeah, yeah, the the land gets the right of flame off the ground. Yeah, at a moment of wait a minute. Okay, gonna get. Bad lands here. And then Ray to Flame. My opponent appears to be F6. Ray to Flame up to four mana. Burning Wish. Or Relay. Mox Opal. Chrome Mox. Exiling the Wish. And then six cards in exile. Alright, I traded one hand for a different hand. But my next hand starts the game with three mana already in play. I found Wishclaw, Rite of Flame, Galvanic Relay, Dark Ritual, Opal, Veil. Caracas doesn't really matter. Muscle Sliver, sure. Softening up my Ad Nauseam. That's a good one. Lion's Eye Diamond gives me five extra mana this turn. Turns on the two Opals plus the three it provides for itself. LED, Land... I'm all in here. Chrome Mox only taps red, so get started on Rite of Flame. That's four. Dark Ritual off of this Opal. Then play the other Opal. I can Wish Claw for Adnaz. Uh, do I have enough to Wish Claw for Burning Wish for Veil? Or not Veil, uh, Peer. <laughs> These one syllable names. And I Peer. I'm sure the storm experts are like very obvious what this line is, but I'm not that. Seven mana in the pool. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. So seven plus two for Witch Claw is nine, plus one for Tutor is ten, plus Burning Wish is twelve. I can peer with one mana still available. And Witch Claw Talisman and I think Mox Opal is the mana I want to leave available. I, I can just float all my mana now before there's even cards in my hand. So black. Oh, I guess my plan to leave Mox Opal untapped doesn't work if I do that. I mean, it works. They're not going to daze me. Or I could float a green just to be sure. Or I could just leave Taiga untapped. Taiga doesn't get black mana running post search i don't know if that matters oh i i oh no i'm about to give away the wish claw and sack the led i will lose metalcraft <laughs> someday i'll figure this out i'm spending all the mana so it doesn't matter what color i get 
search for burning wish. There's only one left, but there is the main deck tendrils. And I can wish for peer. Peer myself. I did find the last burning wish. We should be good here. Bobble, bobble, diamond, bobble, petal. And petal can cast a bunch of rituals. Or opal can do that too. New opal. I can veil. Do I need to? Do I want to? Do I care? I can leave opal back to do that. Uh, the fourth right of flame. Hold right of flame for five. Love to see that. Black. Rit, rit, rit. And I will veil for good measure. And then Burning Wish doesn't even need to hold priority. I have plenty of mana that I can just put generals in my hand. We did it. Storm for 20. Should have used Grape Shot for the style points. And off we go. Okay. A uh, little bit of a, uh, a bumpy road, but we got there. Just had to count a bunch of times. Against Slivers. Figure out what they do. Consulting the lists on, on Goldfish, we've got two Chalice of the Void, two Null Rod, four Force of Negation, three Leyland of the Void, in addition to four Force of Will Main. This is mostly a Force deck, but they do also have four-ish pieces of board disruption. Okay. They don't play Pyroblast because their lands don't really cast it. I could cut my Relays and just go slower. In last game was a big relay game. If I can veil through counter magic, we can do crazy stuff on turn one. I could cut the main deck tendrils and rely on burning wish. I don't know if I want to do that if I'm trying to go fast though. It's tough when you want both veil and abrupt decay in your deck. A lot of times decks ask you to do one or the other. Uh, I'm going to shave a right of flame. I don't know. Tell me why that's bad in the chat. But everything else, like I want all my engines and I do want my artifacts because I'm planning on going fast. And I still need the veils. Yeah, all right. I'll try to make it make sense. This hand way too slow and doesn't do anything. I'm going to mulligan it. This is a turn one echo. I'm going to keep this and put Misty Rainforest on the bottom. Yep, all in on, on echo. I do have an extra mana if I draw a Veil. Try to make it happen. Well, Plated Sliver start. This is rough against the uh, 7 or 8 Force of Will deck. Taiga. Chrome Mox. I don't need to pitch Brainstorm. But I'm going to lose it anyway. I could cast Brainstorm. Uh, I'm all in here. I'm going to pitch the Brainstorm. I guess I could have checked if Burning Wish resolves first. And then exile the brainstorm, like use opal. That's not what they're countering if they're countering anything. All right, let's hope they kept a null rod hand. Take a spin? Question mark. Yeah, they do have forest pitching crystal and sliver. They have two cards in hand, and their board is one two creature. Let's try to rebuild. Now two three creature. Twenty life. Let's go. Burning wish. What does that get me? Uh. Nothing yet. I want to try to draw some mana and maybe set up a relay and tempo this game out. Just got to use my life total as a turn count. <laughs> Gross. Wasteland is... I'd rather see that than Null Rod, but still tough. Crystalline Sliver only matters as a 3-4 body. I'm not planning on targeting any of their creatures with anything. Hey, rewarded for the thing I did. I can relay here. Or three cards. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, I have two turns. I have exactly enough turns to relay and try to do something. Red, blue. Burning wish. Float red in response. Volcanic relay. And let's try to do something here. Relay hit volcanic island, Mishra's bobble, and bloodstain mire. That ain't it. Another muscle sliver. I take even more damage. Still not dead. Let's see. Right of flame, dead. Okay, uh, next game on the play. Let's let's figure this one out. My answers to force are all already in as thoughtsies, but I don't think that's what that is really for. 
I'm just going to play my deck and try to beat a Force of Will deck. I guess I could have taken that game a little slower, but the pinch between what if they mauled a Null Rod and what if they have Force of Will is, is pretty real. This hand is pretty slow. It does not have a Veil. Soft to Wasteland. Could just turn one Wishclaw past the turn. You could turn one Brainstorm. Try to sculpt my way through some nonsense. I'll try keeping this. Oh, my opponent mulls to four looking for a force again. Oh, just kept seven. We're dead. We're so dead. <laughs> Shit. I think I should wait on all these spells. Livers doesn't give you a ton of time, but I don't want to just like get smeared by Wasteland or... Hey, there's that. Got Vile. Wasteland confirmed. Maybe I was supposed to end step that brainstorm. I don't know. I'm really bad at figuring that out. I'm just going to fetch Underground Sea and put Wishclaw Talisman into play. Generally a step in the right direction towards winning a game. I can bounce a Null Rod if I need to. Cracking off the Wasteland, sure. And that plated its liver. That one's been a steady presence in all these games so far. Opal Chrome Mox. What does that do? I can cast Burning Wish now. It doesn't really get me anywhere. I could like invest in a future here into the Abyss. I could also Brainstorm. And I have the Wish Claw, so I could get Veil of Summer. All right, I'm going to start with Brainstorm. Found Veil and Lion's Eye Diamond straight up. Okay. Can I cast Burning Wish and Veil this turn, or do I have to wait? I have Metalcraft with LED and Opal. Don't need Bobble. I do need 3 mana to do this. Okay, Opal casts Veil, which will draw a card. Or no, it won't. <laughs> uh, they have not cast a blue card. Opal casts Veil, and then I'll only have 1 mana left to get my... Burning Wish off the ground, so no, I'm not there yet. I'm going to put back Veil and Burning Wish, and I'll play the Bobble this turn, redraw, pick up Veil the turn after that. Yeah, I draw Burning Wish and Veil next turn. I'll put Veil on top, lay out my stuff here. I'll at least give myself Metalcraft in case I need a Chain of Vapor on their turn, and I'm going to Bobble now. That puts the Veil in my hand for their turn. Another Plated Sliver. Yikes. I'm not going to be able to Grape Shot anything. Did not see Force of Vigor in lists. Let's hope that's not. It's coming my way. Veil Rider Sliver. Okay. There's the Veil. Ticked up Vile. Casting their Plated Sliver. 1-3 beatdowns. Here they come. Oh god. What is this? Uh, I'm going to float blue just in case this is Collector Roof. Predatory Sliver. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will pass priority. I'm not going to bounce a sliver and let them sack their land to set back my wish claw. Did I count correctly? Veil of Summer, Burning Wish, Echo. Yes, I can Veil and then go into the Echo world. Chrome Mox, I'm going to do this first. If I can hang out something that is worth forcing and draw a card off Veil, that's extra good. Burning Wish. Would like to use Burning Wish's ability. I'd like to get Echo of Eons. Then I'd like to cast Veil of Summer. And then cast Echo of Eons. They can force the Veil. And then when we Echo, their seven can counter spells again. Which is why I was trying to hang out that Burning Wish. Okay, cool. They didn't respond. Blue, 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 Echo. Let's go. Boost is clear. I have my land drop. This is a lot of mana. Storm is four. This is three, four, five, or three, or this isn't all net mana. So uh, I do have the main deck tendrils. I can play out my zeros at least. Those are freebies. Storm is six. New opal. Storm is seven. I get my land. I can cast Rite of Flame. That leaves me with two mana, three, four. I think I. Do I have exactly enough here? Right of Flames 2. Dark Rituals 3. That's 5. 
Oh, I, I have more than enough, yeah. Because the, the witch call is already in play. It only costs one to do the, the tutor thing. But they would need Mind Break Trap to win this game. Exactly 10 drills coming your way. Did we do it? Or are we getting MBT'd? Or like Solitude, your own creature to be at one? All right, looks like it's happening. Okay, got him for Xaxes. Ooh, this deck is stressful. Let's keep rolling. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code BOSTONROLL for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the draw for the final round, playing for the positive record in this Exploration League. Learning stuff. This hand doesn't do anything. I'm going to mulligan it. My opponent does not have any results uh, that are posted. I'm going to keep this one. I have Veil, Brainstorm. I'm a land away from, or a mana source away from, Echo. Oh god, Bloodstained Mire. Oh no, oh no. Another fast combo deck where I lost the die roll. You love to see it. Okay, I mean, Veil of Summer is the best card in this matchup, and uh, I just lost the die roll. I don't have a green source anyway, so maybe that's not great. Not a good argument. But we'll see what happens here. They have three cards left in their hand. If it's also Entomb Reanimate, then good job. They did just pitch a reanimation spell to the Grief. They took Burning Wish, okay. Entomb and Reanimate. Certainly Entomb. There's Grizzlebrand. They can activate it once if they even want to. They use discard spells, that's cool. If they don't, Tendrils only needs to be Storm 2 here. Uh, I'm going to play Lion's Eye Diamond and just pass the turn. Veil of Summer keeps me alive through their discard. Grizzlebrand puts them back up to 11, but if they get greedy, I can just mini Tendrils. Got to find the way here. Animate Dead. Does this target target opponent? It does. Okay, cool. In that case, let's, uh, I guess I need Bayou here. And they have cast a black spell. Ooh, I drew Dark Ritual. Uh, this puts them to seven. Oh, no, it doesn't because the whole thing doesn't happen. This puts them to 11. Please draw seven. Uh, bummer. All right, now I have to actually work. They're at 11. I need six storm to kill them. I can. I can echo here with mana floating if I want to take a spin. Should I brainstorm for velocity or leave mana up on the back end? Like I can just echo right now and see where we land. Dark Ritual gets the Wish Claw into play. I don't know if I'm supposed to brainstorm here. I mean, I'm just like losing it anyway, but also if I find any mana source off of a brainstorm, then it paid for itself and just built two storm. If I miss on that, then I may have cost myself pretty big. And I'm going to try it. I think it's worth it. Even like a lotus petal is just worth it here. Right of flame. Sure, we'll count that one. Then use lotus petal for red. Right of flame. Okay, I think, yeah, that was worth it. And then wish claw leaving black red in the pool get the echo and let's oh wait were they dead <laughs> i just should have just got tendrils i'm such a dingus all right uh let's work harder than we need to here <laughs> that was literally lethal okay lesson learned and all right i don't think i'm gonna get punished here dark ritual Rate of Flame, Rate of Flame, Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, LED. I'm not going to mess this up twice. I see the line now. And I don't even need to float mana. You just get the tendrils. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just showing off. Okay, we beat Reanimator on the draw. We beat a turn one discard spell plus Grizzlebrand. That shit's pretty cool. Uh, I saw Bryant do this in his... 5-0 League. You don't really have time to do relay stuff in this matchup, and Chain of Vapor can remove Grizzlebrand from play, and at least for a turn, and give you a turn to develop, which, as we saw that game, is sometimes all you need. 
I think this makes sense. Let's go. There's no graveyard hate in the deck. You just have to race. I have the veil, which is important, but now they know what I'm up to. They just kept seven. I have two tutors, lots of mana. I'm going to keep this. Unmask targeting yourself. Okay. Uh, Sarah's emissary. Okay. There are instants in my deck that can remove Sarah uh, emissary from play, and I win with sorceries. So they probably name sorcery here. And I get to pace out the whole game around this being their thing. Yeah, okay, protection from sorceries got you. Sure. I can get Wishclaw into play. Wishclaw for chain. Catacombs. LED. Do I chuck the brainstorm here? You can't exile Wishclaw to Chromox, unfortunately, because it specifies non artifact card. But I can exile Veil. Vale. And still have Brainstorm around, or Exile Brainstorm and still have Veil around. Exiling Brainstorm gives me the mana for Chain of Vapor. That's not nothing. Okay, uh, I'm going to exile the Brainstorm. I have to put the shields down for a turn here, but I'm going to get Bayou. Or do I want Badlands? No, I want to be able to cast this Veil also. But red cards are really good. Am I just giving up on Veil? I think I want the Veil. Tell me in the comments if that's wrong. Wishclaw Talisman's in play, and I'm going to bobble my opponent. I am working on mostly perfect information here. They're going to Faithless Looting, which changes the information. Grief. Uh, grief indeed. Uh, if they find... or They'll end up with one card in hand, so they can't pitch Grief here. They could discard it and reanimate it, I guess. Discarded Unmask and Badlands. Grief is the one card in their hand. Okay. Draw for Bobble. Draw for Turn. Bobble, Opal. That's pretty good. Bobble. Opal. Okay, here's, here's the business. I can Wishclaw for Chain. And then Chain Emissary. And we're chilling for a little while. I guess that's just the play. Like, giving them Wishclaw is not super sexy, but I have another one in my hand. I can Veil in between. Is there some universe where I'm supposed to play the other Wishclaw this turn, take another hit, and then win all at once? Is that a thing? If I play the other Wishclaw, I have four mana to spend, which isn't enough to tutor twice and play the card twice. I think I'd rather hold up Veil and just... I guess I'm not holding up Veil, though. Oh, yeah, I am, because this is a one-mana play. Okay. Wishclaw for Chain. Then Chain, your stupid idiot. They want to sack a land to bounce any of my permanents. Sure. They all cost zero. And then I'll sack a land and get my Wishclaw back. Not interested. So their hand is Grief and Emissary. I do have room to bobble here. Still have Metal Metalcraft. Archon on top. If they grief, I can veil it. And they have the wish claw, but if they don't win this turn, I get it back and then I go nuts. Grief pitching Archon. Veil. Grief ends up in the graveyard, and their hand is just emissary now. Draw for bobble. Draw for turn. The land's cool. Talisman. Oh, I just do I echo here? Or do I put wish claw into play? Load another turn. They would have to wish claw for like faithless looting, and then I think I should play slow here. If they wish claw for faithless looting, discard the emissary and find reanimate. But I have another chain now, and they would have to give wish claw back to do that. So I'm actually there's not a lot I'm scared of right now. Bobble now in your upkeep. Bobbling on my turn versus their turn is basically. Do I want to play around discard by not having the card in my hand at all, or try to draw a veil to play around discard that way? And I could just not need veil if I do it this way. I could have echoed there, but I don't really want to refill their hand when I know they're kind of sputtering on nothing. Opponent is deep in the tank on this Mishra's Bobble. I don't know. Maybe they went and made a sandwich. Wear tear on top of the deck. Uh, that's kind of a beating. They can tear my Wishclaw Talisman, and that is a card that. I don't need more copies of. It's funny because they probably think that was a great draw. 
And I mean, it's going to buy them a turn, but we just do this turn cycle over again. Veil vale of Summer. That's my best card again. Another Wishclaw. I think I saved the pedal to build Storm next turn. Again, I'm concerned about echoing. Maybe I shouldn't be. But also, like, what am I worried about happening in one turn cycle? Like, I'd rather just have more mana than less mana. Like, exactly Faithless Looting into Reanimate is annoying. Dark Ritual. Okay. Right, yeah, Dark Ritual lets them looting from the graveyard, and if they hit reanimate, that's pretty good. But I still have the Wish Claw. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Your one card left in hand was, in fact, reanimate. Not bad. Okay, I have another Chain of Vapor. We can keep doing this. And this does put you to three life. Not a bad spike, I do say. And just give you another Wish Claw Talisman. Get my other Chain of Vapor. Boing. All right, <laughs> this game's getting weird. They can use their Wish Claws to try to play the game or just like die to tendrils at some point. I got Veil of Summer chilling. Feel free to tell me all about the lines I missed. That could have won the game two turns ago. I am out of chains, but I can echo and get my two chains back. Another pedal, okay. Yeah, and if they wish for a way to get their emissary back in, then I have the last wishes. Just drawing and making land drops. So am I. They can't reanimate anything anymore for life. It has to be exhume or animate dead, which costs more mana, which slowed them down a bit. Fetching down to three. Oh, is emissary a seven drop? I thought they were at three already. Maybe it's a not an eight drop. Three and four life don't change the number of tendrils that kill them, but just worth noting. Okay, it's go time. We're doing something. Dark Ritual. Okay. Faithless Looting. Okay. They are going to end up with Emissary back in play here. And, oh, they're using the other Wish Claw as well. I should be able to just win, right? Or they're getting Iona. If they name Black, or they would need to put two creatures into play. And they do that with three mana. Animate Iona. Okay. If you name blue, I just tendrils you. If you name black, I spin up Echo and Okay. And chain you. Okay, I'm gonna crack some fetch lands in the end step. At uh bad lands underground sea. I guess I can veil here because we're about to have new hands anyway and draw for turn okay i should be able to figure this one out i get two tutors and i have one gajillion mana petal petal land drop is taiga play right of flame give you wish claw talisman and i get echo echo make blue 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 cast echo Puts the chains back into the deck where I can wish for them. And all right, there's a veil. Don't expect them to have any spells, but right of flame, right of flame, float. I guess I can just activate the wish claw, get another chain, chain your Iona. I can veil if they have red blast, which is like the one card I can even imagine them having. Then Fetch. Last fetchable land. Black. Rich Claw Talisman. Opal. And Tutor. Or Tendrils. So I don't need to make mana there. I already have some in the pool. Unless this is some weird Mind Break Trap version of Reanimator. Should be good here. Bang. We did it. We beat uh, two Sarah's Emissaries and an Iona. Pretty handily, I would say. I guess resolving, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six demonic tutors in a game. <laughs> you should be able to figure it out. Okay, uh, three, two. The match against Doomsday just felt rough. Like, it felt close, but they had Oppo Agent and Shouldred. I think I could have beat one or the other, but it didn't work out that way. And then the green-white depths matchup, I just failed to pivot off of my... I kept the hand on the strength of Echo and then just didn't recognize that Empty was the right get with Burning Wish once we were actually casting spells. Then won the rest of the games. 
might have worked harder than I needed to against Reanimator, but really eliminating what they could do and what I need to think about and letting myself just try to go off with as much resources as possible, as many resources as possible, ended up working out. This was an informative league, a nice little test run training wheels for the next league that I play, which will be a $500 on the line trophy league. This one technically was too, but I blew it. The lessons learned, I will send this league to the the storm hive mind and let them know what or ask them for their opinion everybody chip in help me get that 500 dollars. we'll see if they they are down to help they usually are they love talking about storm jeremy thank you for this challenge halfway there your 500 dollars is safe everybody else thanks for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe if you have constructive criticism about lines or whatever decisions please Leave them in the comments. I will read them and they will inform me for the next run at this. As always, thanks for being here and I'll see you next time.